Hey everyone, it's Mr. Wistar again. In this lesson, which is the first one in Chapter 3, we're going to start talking about how to create our own classes that we can actually use to create objects in our programs. So far we've just been using other people's classes. Now it's time to start talking about how to create our own. So we're going to talk about what the, the differences between public and private. We're going to talk about what the basic layout of a class is. And then lastly, we're going to talk about how to write a method called toString, which is really useful when you want to try to debug an object and make sure that your class methods are working properly. So going back to an earlier lesson where we started talking about objects, remember that we said that there are two main parts to an object. One is the variables, which help define what its current state is, or the uh, characteristics that it has at this moment in time. And then there are a bunch of methods that define its behavior. So again, when we talk about state, we're really talking about the value of all the variables inside of an object. And that's what gives an object its uniqueness. Uh, the, every object of the same class has the same set of methods, but they may have very different states. So just as an example here, so say we have this class called person, and we have two objects, one called Roger and the other one called Marcy. So you can see down below that Roger and Marcy both have the same set of methods. They both have the same behavior, but they can have very different values for the variables that make up their class. And that's what makes these two people different. Okay, when we define a class, when we write the stuff that goes inside of the class, we have to start worrying about what should be public and what should be private. And in short, the difference is that things that are public inside of an object can be used by other objects. So if we make the methods in our class, say, public, then that means that someone who's writing another class uh, can call those methods. And that's how we've been able to use methods in our other objects. But private means that the only uh, part of our program that can access something that's private inside of an object is another method inside that same object. So things that are private can only be accessed by the object that owns them. And typically, that's the uh, access uh, restriction that we put on class variables. Because we don't want other objects to just go inside of our class object and muck around with the variables. We want the object to be able to control what happens to its own variables. So taking a look at the syntax for a basic class skeleton, every class looks something like this. It always starts with public class at the top. It always has a big set of curly braces that goes around everything inside of it. And then typically what you'll see is all of the class variables listed first up at the top. And then below that, you'll see all of the methods listed. And we usually put them in a specific order. This isn't a requirement. Your program will work no matter what order you put things in. But it just helps people read your code and see what they expect to see. So typically we have first are any constants, which we'll talk about later. But um, you've seen some of these before. Like, for example, the, all the colors that are defined in the color class are constants. They're variables that don't ever change their values. Then after that are the actual class variables. Um, followed by all the methods. And we actually usually put the methods in a specific order. We usually put the constructors first, since we use those to build the class, or sorry, to build an object. And then we follow them with the accessor methods, and then the mutator methods. And then very lastly, if this is a program which is going to need to run, the last thing we should put at the bottom is its main method. So before we get to adding data to a class, Let's see an example of that. So here we have, we're going to make a class student together. I've gone ahead and typed out some of the basic class skeleton code uh, just to save a little bit of time. But we can see here, of course, we don't forget our class comment, but then we have public class student. We have our set of curly braces. We're about to put our variables here, and then we're going to start putting our methods. So let's get back to our slides. So every class variable that you want to add to your class definition you put uh, right inside those curly braces right at the top and it should be the same as if you create a normal uh, variable except that you're going to put the word private in front of it so it'll be private type 
name. And you should put each variable on its own line. And actually, you should put a comment above each class variable explaining what it's for. You can't assign values to class variables. Uh, those should only be changed inside of the constructor or inside of another method. So let's add some variables to our student class. So for example, I think students should probably have a name. And since it's a name, it should probably be of type string. And we're going to put a comment in front of it that just explains what it's for. Name of, of the student. Okay, why don't we add a couple more variables. We'll say um, grade student is in. So we'll call that my grade. And then maybe what we'll do is we'll have a another variable for the student's current average in the class. Okay. One of the things that you probably notice uh, from what I just did is that all of my class variables begin with the word my. Again, that's not a requirement of Java, but it's a trick that my old college professor taught me to name your class variables beginning with the word my. And the reason why you do that is quite simply it allows you to instantly look at a variable and recognize that it's a class variable as opposed to other variables that might be parameters or local variables that, you know, don't begin with the word my. So that's just a little trick that I learned uh, back in the day. Okay, so uh, we've added data to our class. Uh, we should probably write a constructor too. Before we get into two string, let's do that. So I'm going to write a constructor. Um, you'll see a lot more about this in the other video that concerns writing constructors, but let's just write a constructor. So we need to make a constructor. We're going to call it public student. And then we're going to give a value to each one of our variables. So my name and my grade equals 13, because I'm going to pretend to be a PG. And my average equals 96.2. I'm doing pretty well. OK, got our constructor. Now let's get back to our lesson. OK, last part of this lesson has to do with a, a special class method that every class that you write should have, and it's called toString. toString is a method designed to take all the data in a class and put it together into some string that you can then use outside of the class to represent that object. You can print it, you could save it to a variable, um, and the funny thing about toString is that uh, it's the method which gets called automatically whenever you use an object in a way that uh, your program would expect a string to be used and especially you think of when you try to print an object um, you have probably not realized this before but all the objects that you've been using up to this point for the most part have, have had a two-string method that you've just been able to call so for example if you create a rectangle and print it what you're actually doing is you're calling the rectangles to string method uh, inside the parentheses of print line. So if you take a look at the example down here below, if we have a person called Roger and we say system.out.println Roger, what we're really saying without having to actually say it is system.out.println Roger.toString. So when you write a toString method, and this is the first time we've written a method that's not a constructor, and we'll get to much more information about how to write methods later in this chapter, but for now, every toString method you write is going to have this form, uh, with the only difference being what you put in there um, where that comment is. So public string toString, because it's a method that has no parameters and it returns an object of type string, and then inside the curly braces you're going to create a new string variable and then you're going to assign the values of all the class variables to that string in some way that makes it look halfway decent when you might go to print it and then the last statement return uh, output or whatever you named your string is just what produces the return value and this has to go inside your class um, it's an accessor method, so it should be the last accessor method inside of your 
class definition. So let's add one to our student class. So if I make a toString method, I'm going to write a comment for it, of course. So returns the string representation. And at return, uh, the student as a string. OK, public string to string. And then, so we're going to start with string output. We're going to say output starts off with an empty string. And now what we have to do is add all our class variables to this string in such a way that it actually looks pretty decent. So I'm not going to get too fancy here. I'm just going to say output gets output plus um, my name plus uh, a comma and a space and now plus um, the grade and a comma and a space and the average. Again, nothing fancy. Your two string can be cooler than mine. And then we're going to return output. Who? No, output. Okay. So let's compile our program and let's write a really simple main method just to test it. Public static void main string array of args. Okay, so we're going to create a student. Call it Roger. Remember, the constructor gets called automatically when you create the student, so we don't have to call it. But when we go to print, can't type today, but that's okay. Now remember, just by printing our student object, we're going to call toString automatically. Uh, we don't have to ever put dot toString after an object. Um, so let's make sure we've got closing curly brace and let's compile our program and let's run it. So there we go. So see here's the output from my toString method. Here are all the values that I put in in my constructor and here's our object. So we talked about a lot in this lesson. We talked about um, a review of what the parts of an object are and how the variables represent the state which determines the unique characteristics of each object. We talked about why, uh, what the difference is between public and private and why class variables should be private. And we talked about the basic structure of a class and the order that you should list the parts that make up the definition of a class. We talked about how to add class variables to your class. And then lastly, we talked about how to write a toString method, which every class that you write should have because it allows you very easily to debug your class and make sure that your methods are working properly. Okay.